We've got hard evidence that organisations with great cultures perform a whole lot better. So in a sense, great cultures have become the holy grail. Cultures can differentiate an organisation in the marketplace and can't be copied. Great cultures are worth fighting for. <laughs> Leaders have come to realise that improving workplace cultures is extremely challenging. In many, many cases, large culture change investments have yielded very little. That's where my concept of UGRs has a huge part to play. Now, UGRs, Unwritten Ground Rules, are a function of being human beings. It's not confined to work, it's not confined to social, it's a function of being human beings. So whenever we get a collection of people, there will be UGRs, and of course, they apply in the work context. So I want to share with you some examples of UGRs that I've come across in a work context. I'm not talking about group operations here, I'm talking about just generally some UGRs that I've come across in various workplaces and they can include things like this. At our meetings it isn't worth complaining because we know nothing will get done. Uh, the only time anyone gets spoken to by the boss is when something is wrong. The organisation talks about the importance of customer service but we know they don't really mean it so we don't really have to worry about it. I know what's needed at a conference. People want engaging fresh content, material they've never encountered before, and it must be practical. I also think it's vitally important people have lots of laughs along the way. People learn more when they're enjoying the process. Even in a shorter keynote presentation, there must be interaction and opportunity for people to explore how the ideas I'm sharing can be applied in their work context. I said, David, do you want to say something? And he said, yes, I did, Steve. He said, I thought I'd better let it be known to you and the rest of the group that during the filming of Hotel Adolphi, I was a managing director. <laughs> he was Ireland's boss. And never appeared on the video. And I wish there had been a camera on the audience. Because if my presentation had been boring up to that point, I can just see the audience, they're going, how good is this? <laughs> the examples I've given you of UGRs are mostly negative. That's not the case with UGRs. If you're in a positive team right now, it follows by definition that there are positive UGRs. It follows. If you're in an ordinary team right now, by definition there are ordinary UGRs. Um, we're human beings, we'll inevitably get a mix. Maybe the biggest question I can put to you is this. Are our current UGRs a function of luck or chance, or are they by design? Steve as a presenter is a highly engaging individual. His style is one that can go across all levels of the organisation. So he can talk to sen the senior leadership teams well and engage them around the science behind UGRs, but he can also talk to the lowest levels of the organisation and just talk about the fundamentals of having good values and how that makes everyone's job easier within the organisation. So he's got a great skill. Steve, I couldn't recommend him more highly. I've introduced him to our New Zealand business. They've, they've captured him, they're, they're using him. And I just got an email the other day from another colleague uh, who's engaged him and is now using him for, for, UG, for introducing UGRs into their workplace. So yeah, I couldn't think of somebody, I've never come across anyone else. Um, who I'd rather use than, than Steve, yeah. Steve is an amazing personality and he has actually turned into a celebrity within our organisation. If an organisation is serious about understanding at grassroots level, what do people actually think? What actually happens? Then absolutely, you know, he is absolutely your man and UGRs are absolutely the way to go.